Uh, okay, so I put up as my keywords neurophysiology, computational neuroscience, and neuroprosthetics. And that's because in my laboratory, we're neuroscientists who work at the systems neuroscience level. And we use neurophysiological techniques, which are usually single unit recordings from individual neurons in the brain. Uh, whoops, it's pacing through itself. Uh, to understand the neural encoding of self motion in natural conditions. And um, so it, you, people probably don't think about self motion as a sensory stimulus, but it is. So if you actually uh, monitor your motion uh, through everyday life, which we can do using a, a small sensor here, this is a MEM device. Uh, mechanical, ele elect micro, uh, electrical, mechanical um, sensor. It senses six dimensions of motion in, uh, as you move through space. And we can actually take these small devices that people are now making and put them on normal people, patients, or even athletes. So we are actually working with the Canadian speed skating team uh, to look at how people move through the world. So the stimulus is motion. The question is, how do you sense motion? And some people know about the vestibular system. And I'll just mention that you have five sensors on each side of the head, three that uh, signal or sense rotation, and two that sense translation. And this sensation is very important for all sorts of things we do every day. And you don't even appreciate it because it's so much a part of what you do. So it helps you keep your posture if you're tripping to right yourself. It keeps your gaze stable as you walk through the world so the world's not moving around your retina and helps you know where you, where you are relative to space. So the vestibular system, of course, uses the vestibular sensors that I just talked about. And those are the semicircular canals, three of them, and the two otoliths for rotation and translation. But um, whoops. in addition, whenever you move through the world, you activate other sensory systems, for example, proprioception as your muscles move, the proprioceptors in your muscles are activated. You also generate motor commands and the brain's aware of the motor commands that you're generating. So if you think about sensing motion, it's really a multimodal system. And that's one of the things that we look at in our lab. You can think of vestibular processing as just being the processing of vestibular inputs. But what we know is using, again, microelectrodes recording from single neurons, that Individual neurons at the first stage of processing the brain are integrating information from lots of different sensory systems, including visual system, proprioception, vestibular, and efferent uh, copies of motor signals. I don't know why this is doing this, but I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, okay. And uh, just to, to uh, finish up, I'll talk about two specific things we're looking at in our laboratory. One is the differential encoding of active versus passive motion. So as I mentioned, you, if you're sitting in a car, you can imagine all the sensation you're sensing is really because of your vestibular system, because you're not moving. Or if you're running through the world, actually you would be having activation of your muscles and a generation of a motor command. So you'd have other signals processing sens sensation of motion in those, those conditions. And a, an easy example would be on a day like today, walking down Peel, which I had to do on the way here. You could imagine being in the posture you see in the first panel, right? And in that case, you're going to want to mount all kinds of reflexes to keep yourself upright. But in the second condition, maybe not you, but somebody could put themselves in this condition and do it on purpose, right? And if you do this on purpose, you actually don't want to be generating the same responses. OK, does that wrap up? Or? Yeah. OK. And then the second thing we're doing is we're actually uh, looking at neural integration to try to s solve problems of uh, disease, so vestibular um, <laughs> Loss is very common, and a common problem is dizziness or vertigo that people uh, will experience. And what we're trying to understand is, in the case of vertigo, how does the brain compensate for the loss of vestibular input? And it can do this using other systems. And we can actually replace the vestibular sensation now using a vestibular prosthetic, which is a bit like a cochlear prosthetic. Whoops. Um, so basically, instead of having a a prosthetic that goes through the cochlea. Instead, we actually have a prosthetic that goes into each of the three semicircular canals that sense rotation. And by doing this, we can artificially stimulate the vestibular set, uh, system using a, one of these gyros, like I showed you in the first slide, one of these little chips. We can record motion and then play that motion into the ear. So one of the things my lab is looking at is how does this particular prosthetic then activate the brain and the compensatory process that are then involved in helping patients. And I'll just. Thank you for the attention. I'm sorry for the problem with the slides.